Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every single Wednesday to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. Today I'm going to be showing step by step how to sew a memory bear. Now if this is your first time on my channel, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials and also check out my memory bear sewing playlist that is linked down below in the description box. The pattern I'll be using today is the Simplicity A2115, and this is a pattern that I prefer to use for memory bears, but if you can't get your hands on this one, um, check your local Walmarts to see if you can find it. But if you can't find this particular one, you can also use Simplicity C5461 or 8155. They are pretty similar to this one, and they're a little easier to find either online or in stores. Um, but even if you don't have any of those patterns, go ahead and still watch the video, because because I do share a lot of tips and tricks that will be helpful for any pattern that you'll be using. So this pattern in particular has nine pattern pieces to make the actual bear and then a few more pieces that can be used to make the little clothes that are accessories for the bear. Each pattern piece will need to be cut out and then I actually went ahead and copied mine onto this thin plastic so they were more permanent, easier to use patterns. And I do have a separate video showing exactly how I did that and I will have it linked right up here in the information icon in the upper corner of the screen. Follow the info on your pattern to make sure you cut out the correct number of each pattern pieces. For example, out of mine I need four different leg pieces. I like to interface my materials, so I trace the pattern right onto the interfaced side. Since you will probably only be cutting one layer at a time, make sure to flip the pattern over so you will have a right side and a left side. Then cut just inside the marked lines of each piece. To keep track of everything, I make a list of the pieces I need and what fabric I'm cutting them from and mark each off as I go. After all the pieces are cut, it's time to start sewing. The first step of the pattern is to sew the two face sides together along the center front seam. So place the two face side pieces right sides together and sew along the side that has the double notches or as I like to draw them just an extra wide notch with a quarter inch seam allowance. Every time you sew a curved seam, you will want to make some small snips in the seam allowance. This helps your curved seams to lay smoother when your bear is completed. Be careful that you aren't cutting into your stitching line. Then we are going to add the face center. I found it easiest to find the exact middle of the piece and line it up with the center seam we sewed before. Then I start sewing there, adjusting the two pieces as I sew, making sure to keep my seam allowances as close to one quarter inch as possible. I find this to be easier than trying to line the edges up and add lots of pens before starting to sew. But if you are more comfortable with penning, then feel free to do it that way. Then I flip it over and sew from the center point to the other edge. By doing it in halves like this, I know the face is centered and if one side ends up just a bit longer on one edge, I can just trim the little bit of excess off and it's fine. Clip the seam allowance. This is one of the most important seams that needs to be clipped because of how sharp of a curve it is at the nose and it's such a prominent part of the bear. If you are using safety eyes and noses like I do, you want to go ahead and install them at this point. I have a video showing how to install them that is linked in the information icon in the upper corner of the screen. Match two of your ear pieces up right sides together and sew along the curved edge. Clip and turn right sides out. Add a small amount of stuffing and sew along the lower edge to close up the ear. Mm -hmm. 
Repeat for the second set of ear pieces. Use the pattern markings to place the ears on the bare face and sew to attach with about a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Next up is sewing the back of the bare head. Lay the two back head pieces right sides together and sew along the edge with the double notches with a quarter inch seam allowance. Cut snips in the seam allowance, then open the piece up. Place it right sides together with the bare face matching up the edges. Add a few clips to hold the two layers together and sew around the large curved side. Clip the seam allowance and carefully turn the entire head right sides out through the neck opening. Now onto sewing the body. Lay the two body front pieces right sides together and sew to attach them along the center front seam. Match your four leg pieces up in sets of two with the right sides together. Start at the top and sew down the leg and around the curve of the toe to the bottom. Try to keep your seam line as smooth as possible. You'll probably have to sew a few before you can find the exact speed that works best for you. Then start at the top on the other side and sew to the notch. Start again at the second notch and sew to the bottom. Make sure you are back stitching at the beginning and ending of each seam you sew. It's very important to clip the seam allowance around the toe area so the foot will look great when it's stuffed. Time to sew the bottom of the feet. Some people recommend lining up the entire outer edge of the foot with the bottom of the leg and have a pin basically every 1 8 of an inch. But I prefer to just match up the dot markings from the pattern with the leg seams and add clips there. Then I sew slowly and adjust the two pieces as I sew to keep them lined up. Sometimes it ends up to where I have a little excess of the foot material and I just let it stick out a little past the other fabric and bring my seam a little further in from the edge. Clip those seam allowances once again, always making sure you do not cut into the stitching line. Repeat the same steps for the second foot, then turn them both right sides out. Fold the legs in half so the top seam and back seam line up. You can open the seams up or push them to opposite sides to reduce bulk. Clip them to the body front using the markings from the pattern as guides. Make sure the toes are pointing toward the belly when flipped up. Sew to attach the legs to the body using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
Each back piece of the bear has a dart cut out. Fold one piece so the edges of the dart match up. Sew the dart closed with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat for the other piece. Then place the two right sides together and sew from the top to the first notch on the back seam, then from the second notch to the bottom. Leave the opening in the middle for adding stuffing later. Put the front and back pieces right sides together with the legs tucked inside and clip the outer edges together. I like to start at the back seam and work up to the top edges. I sew it in the same way starting at the center seam and sewing up to the top, then start back at the center and sew up to the other top edge. This way if one piece ends up longer than the other I can just trim the excess off at the top. Turn the entire thing right sides out through the opening that was left in the back. Now onto the arms. Place the four arm pieces right sides together in pairs and sew around leaving the short top open and the space between the two notches open. This is another area where you will want to try to keep your stitched curve as smooth as possible. Clip the seam allowances around the curve and turn the arm right sides out. Repeat with the second arm. Use the markings from the pattern to clip the arms in place. Then sew to attach with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Turn the body back inside out. Now we need to sew on the head. Find the front center seam of the body and the center front seam of the head. Match them up right sides together with the head down inside the body. Match up each of the seams making sure to either open or nest your seams to reduce bulk and add a clip at each one. Take your time getting everything situated because this is probably the hardest seam to sew just because there is very little space to work in. Place it under your presser foot and sew the head to the body. Sew very carefully making sure the layers are staying lined up and you aren't accidentally sewing the neck closed. I usually need to sew around twice to make sure I sewed far enough in to hide where the arms were sewn on before and to make sure everything is nice and neat. Turn your bare right sides out through the opening in the back. Take it slowly so you don't accidentally rip the back seam farther open. Time to stuff the bear. I buy Fair Fill Polyfill in 5 pound boxes at Joann's. You can make about 5 18 inch bears from one box. I have found it best to start with the head and make sure the nose is stuffed really firmly so it has that great shape to it. Then firmly stuff the rest of the head. I like to do the legs next and firmly stuff the feet then a little looser in the top of the legs. The same for the arms. Then onto the body. Stuff it so that it is semi-firm but still just a little squishy. If you pull the stuffing apart as you are working with it, you will get better results. You want your bear to be fully stuffed so there aren't any areas that look lumpy or bumpy, but not overstuffed to where the seams are trying to burst open.
When you are happy with how your bear is stuffed, use a ladder stitch to sew the openings in the arms, legs, and back closed. And I do have a separate video that shows step by step how to sew a ladder stitch and that tutorial will be linked in the information icon in the upper corner of the screen. Then your precious memory bear is done and it is ready for hugs. If you have any other questions about sewing memory bears, leave them in the comments down below so that I can read them because I do have one more video coming up that is all my best tips and tricks for sewing memory bears and you don't want to miss out on that video so make sure you are subscribed by clicking my picture right there so you see it when it is posted. And until next time, happy sewing!